join us every Wednesday, Saturday, and Sunday. Stay connected. The streets are empty. Educational institutions are closed. Boredom is at an all-time high and the morale of young people is low. But there is something just for you. During the pandemic, the Victory Youth Group have held online sessions, allowing young people to not just watch and engage, but learn to improve and be the best version of themselves. Wednesday at 6 p.m., Saturday at 5 p.m., and Sunday at 2 p.m. Connect to the group sessions, express your views, and remember, be part of something big. Welcome to the Lockdown Live special, Home Bitter Home, okay? Hashtag, there's no place like home. How many families today are suffering? How many families today are broken? They have no idea where they are going in life. Constant fights, infidelity, abuse, uh, physical abuse, verbal abuse, sexual abuse, pain, jealousy, envy, you name it. Problems upon problems. We see that even though we're in this, you know, quarantine lockdown period, there are many families that are fighting each other. Husbands and wives fighting each other as well. And it's a problem. Today, the VYG is bringing this special program for everyone. For everyone to see that there is hope. Lives can transform. Families can be restored. We're going to have four examples, testimonies of young people. They're young. Part of the VYG. But they were able to see their lives transform. They were able to see a restoration in the family. The first family that we're going to see are brothers. Don Bell and Frederico. Listen to what they have to say. It's very short. But listen. Because it will inspire and show to you and to everyone who is watching that people's lives can change, people's families can change. Watch their testimony right now, watch it. My name is Federico, and before I came to VYG, I grew up in Angola, I grew up without dad for 10 years. And also my mom, she was in control, but she wasn't really in control. And at the, at the age of eight years old, I was introduced to pornography. I used to watch with my neighbors. And also when I moved to UK around 12 years old, and I saw my dad and my mom fighting and got to the point that I had to grab my dad and fight my dad as well because I was helping my mom, basically. That's what happened on that day. And also, I, was, I used to be someone that who party a lot. And when I used to go party, I used to sit with girls in the house party. If I go club, I will do something with the girls inside the club just to fill the emptiness that was inside of me. And this is my life when I came before the VYG. So before I came to the VYG, you know, I was a guy who's empty on the inside, really empty to the point where I would go to many parties, get into different relationships, just to literally fill the void on the inside. So much so, I would go party literally every week and I'd be searching for motives, even when there's no motive, just, you know, not to be at home. And that was the, re the reason for that, is that because at home, we used to have loads of arguments, um, you know, seeing my parents fight, my mom, when my dad punched my mom, seeing him, see him do that. And that really led me for me to, you know, not be at home all the time and to run away, let's say, from my problems. I'd even play football just to forget about everything because whenever I play football, you really forget about everything. But then what used to happen when I come back again and then his older thoughts come back again, you know, you realize it's like you're going back to reality. And I had no sense of direction. I would, you know, get into different relationships. Like I said, I would even do, you know, we would book, we'd book hotel um, just for us to do many things with girls there. 
and that, that was that was my life literally so i'll just mini all these things just to fill the void on the inside because i was empty and also when i came because i knew what to do i knew what to change but because i was stubborn i didn't want it to change because i wanted to wait so but within three months i was in the vyg that's when i actually deep down think about my life where i'm going so through coming i was listening to the words and it's the word that changed me because i wanted to do my will but I got to the point that okay now let me do the will of God, the will of the will of God first. So I put a place God in my in my life. I was like, nah, God, if this is what you want for me, then I'll do your will. So through the words that I've learned, through the word that I took for myself, it changed me because it's the word that changed me, and also through the decision I've made because now I'm standing here. So for me, um, today I am happy. You know, I no longer, you know, feel empty on the inside. I no longer need to be in a relationship to feel happy. I no longer need to go to parties or motives even for me just to feel the void on the inside. For me to even, let's say, forget about my problems. I don't need to do all these things. Today I'm happy. And coming to the VYG has really helped me, you know, for me to be confident as well. For me to face my problems and even overcome them. And until today, still overcoming them. And today I am happy. And this I have to say, and my family as well, we're moving forward. We're fighting every day. You see everyone? Did you see their example? Young. But they were unhappy, living a terrible life as young guys, making wrong choices. But they came to the VYG, heard the truth, words of encouragement, words of motivation, which led them to make the right choices in life and that was through their faith and that's why we're sharing these testimonies just like we're going to share the, the testimonies of Anusha and Tanusha by the way what they have to share is very powerful listen to what they say listen to what they're going to be saying listen very carefully to what they, they say it's very strong stay tuned Watch what they have to say. Hi, my name is Anusha and this is my sister. So um, I used to be someone who, you know, used to live in a fantasy world. So I had this life in my mind that didn't really exist. So I would distance myself from my family members. I would distance myself from my, you know, my own life. And I would live that life in my mind. You know, I would dream about things that wasn't real. And I loved to be there. And I also used to read fan fictions, um, and I would put myself in those stories, you know, I would feel the same things that the characters were feeling and I used to love being there. Um, I also felt really empty, but at the time I didn't know I was empty. So I always thought to myself, there must be something more to life. Like there must be something that, you know, I was searching for something, but I just didn't know what I was searching for. But I knew there was something that, you know, um, there was something that I could take hold of but I just simply didn't know what it was at the time and for me I used to be someone that always wanted attention from boys I remember in secondary school I was about 15 16 that's when it all started I used to get a lot of attention from boys like I said complimenting me and that drove me to want more more attention from guys to fill myself because I felt empty and I remember I ended up in a relationship with this guy. He was my first boyfriend and he just started abusing me and um, using me, I mean, as well. And yeah, abusing me with his words as well to the point where I just had enough. I just didn't know how to deal with the, with the problem anymore. And I remember I left the school to start fresh and eventually I didn't learn because I, I came back to my old school and the cycle was just it was just repeating itself. I ended up with another guy and he started using me again. And even my money, he would just take all my money. And I didn't see it. I was basically, as they say, blind in love. And I even remember at home, for example, my mom, she would just not like me having a boyfriend, for example. I would come home and we would just um, shout at each other, argue, I would swear at my mom and just lie a lot to her, saying that I'll be revising at college, but I'll be at my boyfriend's house. So it just caused a lot of like tension and friction between us. And even like in my bedroom, that was the biggest battle I even faced. I used to suffer strongly like with sleep paralysis. I used to not be able to sleep during the night. I used to see shadows. I used to hear people calling my name. I used to even feel like as if someone was behind me watching me, but in fact, no one was there. 
And yeah, this even led me to actually find out what it was and I searched it up. It was all scientific, scientific um, telling me that it's normal, every teenager goes through it, but I wanted, I wanted to be free, but I just didn't know how. And even at home, I remember my mom, like I said, she got involved. Well, some family member was apparently jealous of my mom, so they done witchcraft on her. And from that moment on, my mom just started going mad, like mental. She, she, she like lost it, you know, like she would basically sit down and stare at the wall. She became suicidal, depressed. Um, if I'm not mistaken, she even stopped eating. Mm -hmm. Like she couldn't eat properly anymore. She was so low. And what what my mum even did um, called another witch doctor to solve the problem. But yeah. it didn't help. Which of course didn't help. So um, we were. That's how our lives were. And my family wasn't really. You know, even us both. We wouldn't us, speak. Like we would hardly, hardly speak. We would hardly speak. But now after we came to the church to the VYG. Um, our lives changed mm -hmm. and you know that one thing that I was searching for the thing I was speaking speaking about earlier on um, I I found you know I really found now I don't live in a fantasy world anymore I don't uh, live a life that is uh, that doesn't exist I live my life and I'm happy mm -hmm. with the life that I live you know I don't need to distance myself from my own life to go into a fantasy world that doesn't exist I don't need to put myself in stories to make my, myself feel happy or feel like, yes, now I have it. No, because I have God now. And honestly speaking, like, it's it's enough for me. I'm, I'm happy. I'm truly happy yeah, now. Yeah, and God, he even, like, through faith and the word of God, he started even restoring our home, like, our family members. Some of them, they're in church now, and some of them, they're not there yet, but God has transformed everything. There's peace, there's unity, there's love. Yes, we do have little, like, fights here and there, but it's not something that lasts forever. Like, we're able to overcome them. We're able to know how to fight the battle there. And even with mm. myself, like, like my sister said, I'm free from sleep paralysis. I'm free from my problems. I don't need the attention of boys anymore because God lives inside of me. I received what only God could fill in me. And I would even say, for example, the only way that I was able to overcome these things is, yes, by attending the VY to the church, but they taught me to fight. They taught me to not accept my problems. They taught me to fight and confront the devil. There'll be times where I would go literally head to head with the devil and I, I would tell him, stop stop using me stop using my life i'm not yours anymore my life is not yours and eventually everything started going well for me my life today is is, is a blessing mm -hmm. it's a blessing and i just want to say like if any of you you know who are watching this video right now if you feel hopeless if you feel like but my family is too broken um, my life is too broken i've gone through too much I just want to say there is nothing too hard for God. Mm -hmm. He can really restore because me and my sister were like best friends now. You know, my relationship with my dad wasn't the best, but because of God, you know, it's like he shows me how to behave. And because of that, I see a difference and it's real. Um, and we are genuinely and truly happy. Of something big. Yes, we are running all the way from Northern Ireland. We ain't got time for gossip, lies, fake ideas, gas talk. No, we are ready to self-discipline ourselves for the new education that starts at home. It's not an easy way, like a bed full of roses where everything is done for us. We choose to see difficulties to make us disciplined for the future. But really and truly, no, it's not about the costs, but the value of waking up early in the morning to meditate on the only word that can bring life to us, forming our bodies to be the temple of the Holy Spirit, not allowing ourselves to be dragged by the popcorn, movies and chills all day at home, and really challenging ourselves to become a better youth every day. Excelling in the skills that education teaches us to be organized and to know how to deal with our daily schedule, fighting to avoid all sorts of bad habits that can lead us, our flesh to sin, dancing to the tunes that really bring an effect to our lives. It's VYG quarantine songs on Telegram and makes us strive for the future. For sure, the wedding on the altar is being invested as two are better than one. We are learning with our family that serving one another helps us to become closer than ever. 
a little breakfast in the morning can make the whole family smile when doing it wholeheartedly. We ain't got time to be fake. We are genuine, being real to what really does make the difference. No negativity. Geen negativiteit. Mooi lang mooi. Hitay senashi. Hati negativity. Senia van negativiteit. Nou, a negatividade. Incredibly powerful. That's our branch from Northern Ireland. All about motivation. Hashtag no negativity. And this is what Julian and Julius is, who are twins, Julian and Julius's testimony is all about. Watch their real life story. Very powerful. Go ahead. Coming to the VYG, my life was a big mess. I had no sense of direction. With everything that I touched, I was failing in. My dad left us, me and my mother, by the age, at the age of three. And my dad was also someone that he cheated on my mom as well. So he had multiple women at the same time. And that same suit I followed. So I had, you know, like different girls at the same time. And, and the, thing, the thing was, I was looking for love. I was looking to find someone to settle down with. But I didn't know the best way how, as I didn't have a male role model. My mom tried to bring us up in the right way. But my mom is a woman. She's not a man. So she wasn't able to teach us the what it was to be a man and that was something that I lacked to the point that you know I tried to look for that sort of role model in the friends that I had the ones that were older but because they were immature as well they weren't showing me the, the best examples so the way that they dealt with girls I dealt with girls in the same way the same way they dealt with their problems I dealt with problems in the same way so they were really bad role models for me even to the point that I even envied my brother I was jealous of him because the friends that I had they would praise him, they would give him glory, but no one would ever look to me. No one would ever see the achievements that I achieved to the point that I felt like an outcast. I was a part of the group, but at the same time, I felt like I wasn't a part of the group. And that's, that's what led me to kind of envy him. I didn't wish anything good for him. In front of his face, I'd be like, well done, Julius, great. But behind him, I wish that it, it happened to me instead of him. And this is something that went on for a few years, but un until I came to the BYG. And when I stepped into the building for the first time, it was, it was so different. Something that I never experienced before. Everyone was smiling. Everyone was happy. Everyone was so welcoming. And one of the things that I, I learned there was that first I had to, you know, forgive my dad. And that was one of the hardest things I had to do was, for, was to forgive him for all the things that he did. Things that he did to my mom, what he did to us by leaving us. That was the first thing. And it, like I said, it wasn't easy, but I was able to let go for the help of God. Also, I learned that I don't need to compare myself to my brother, that we are both two different individuals and that we both have two different talents and God has called us to do, God has called us to do, this, called, called us to do the same thing, but in different ways. And also, I learned that the way that I was dealing with girls was the wrong way. It, it wasn't the right thing to have, you know, multiple girls at the same time as I was deceiving all of them, which was wrong. So today, I'm happily married. So I have one woman and that's all that I need. I don't need multiple women to make me happy. When it comes to the relationship with my dad, you know, we have a good relationship today. We talk today. I don't hate him anymore. I wish him nothing but the best. With my brother, I don't envy, I don't envy him anymore. I know who I am. I know what my identity was. I know what my purpose is, which is to help others. I don't need to look to my brother and be envious of him. But when he achieves something great, I'm happy for him. I wish him nothing but the best. And for you who are watching right now, and for you who say you don't believe in God, you don't believe in this God stuff, what can, what can I say to you that will help you? The VYG is the place that changed my life. If you look at the way your life is right now, are you happy with it? You tuning in today is an opportunity. And everything that I've said within my story here is an, is an opportunity for you to change your life. The same way God was able to change my life, God was, able to, God was able to restore my family, God was able to restore my love life, God was able to make me a new man, as today I am a new man. God wants to do the same thing to you, make you a new man and a new woman. God bless. Before joining the BYG, 
I was someone that I didn't have a vision for my life. I didn't know where I wanted to go. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I was also someone that I had a lot of um, anger issues due to my dad leaving me when I was younger. It's something that kept up with me through the years. I was someone also that used to link a lot of girls and play a lot of girls. I wasn't faithful to one. And I was also someone who was one person at school and at home, but then with my friends, I was something else. And all of this changed when I joined the VYG. And one of the first things that I had to learn how to do was to forgive. I had to forgive my dad for the things that he did to me, because how could I expect God to forgive me for my wrongs if I couldn't forgive my dad for the wrongs that he did towards me? And then I had to you know, work on my mindset. So through the messages, through the words of faith, I was able to change my mindset so that I now, after changing my mindset, I had a vision to excel. I had a vision to achieve. I had a vision to succeed, which led me to, you know, start a few businesses of my own, which led me to get married at a young age. And all of this wouldn't have been possible if it wasn't for the messages, if it wasn't for the things that I was hearing in the VYG. So maybe right now you're someone who are listening to this. You don't believe in God. You don't believe in faith. You don't believe that maybe the VYG is for you. I will tell you right now that opportunities come around in life. And some opportunities come by again and some don't. But what I say to you right now is the same way that I took this opportunity and many others took this opportunity. Take this opportunity to join us in the VYG where your life can change, where your life can progress, where your life can develop. I hope this testimony has you know, inspired you to join us and to see a change in your life today. The first one is what we call, and you're going to see it there on your screen, a defeatist. A person who expects or excessively or is excessively ready to accept failure. Their lives remain defeated as they have adopted a mentality of not trying at all. The second one is the spiritually confused. Not sure of who they are before God. Emotionally and mentally unbalanced. They don't think that their faith can call the attention of God. They prefer not to use their faith in an aggressive way because of the fear of not being answered. The third is the proud. They think they know it all. They think they know better than God. They think they can do things with their own strength and intelligence. They don't consult God before they take any decision in life. They don't like asking for help because they think that it shows signs of weakness. Proud people. Proud. And lastly, like these testimonies, are those who trust and depend on God. Not religion. I want to make this clear. Not religion. They depend on God. They see their problems as God's problems. In other words, God's going to fight together with them to overcome. They don't accept defeat and failure. They strive for success in all aspects of life. Because they believe that their success will honor God. They have an attitude of, they have the attitude of all the great men and women in the Bible who made the difference in life made a difference and overcame which one of these four you fall into think about it your life doesn't depend on religion your life doesn't depend on the government your life doesn't depend on your mother or father brother sister your life doesn't depend on people your life doesn't depend on money your life doesn't depend on anything but what is inside of you the faith that is inside of you the moment that you allow it to unleash and you practice this faith i'm going to leave it here because I know that the, these testimonies spoke and this example here has spoken to you. Make a choice. Here in the VYG, we don't judge people. We show people the way, how their lives can change for the better. 
And I'm absolutely certain if you take this step in order for your life to change, great things will also happen in your life. May God bless you all abundantly. Just before you go, just before you go, listen, tomorrow we have something special happening Sunday Live. Okay? Uh, we're going to be having the anthem and straight up radio. Uh, the VYG anthem or straight up radio anthem is going to be a Sunday Live tomorrow at 2 p.m. You can see the artwork here. You can see it here. Okay? 2 p.m. You can join us. And we also have a very powerful 10 a.m. service. You can see all the details online, uckg.org. For you who really and truly wanted to build your faith, you don't want to remain the same anymore. I'm going to say a short prayer here. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for all those who are listening, to all those who watched this video. Maybe it's their first time. They may be even new to faith. I may, they may even think that this is some religious talk, which is not. It's all about life transformation, changing people's lives. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you may help these people to believe that they can change through their faith. Their families can be restored. They can grow. They don't need to suffer in silence. They don't need to suffer with sleep paralysis. They don't need to be addicted or to go back to think about the past traumas. No, my God, they can overcome. Your power is more than capable of changing their lives. So, Lord, I pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, that you may help these people and bless them greatly. This is my prayer. What I determine in Jesus' name. Amen. This is our faith. So this is it. If you want to get in contact with us, if you want to talk to us, our details is, is here on the screen. VYG at uckg.org 0207 686 6000. VYG at uckg.org 0207 686 6000. Have a wonderful evening.